let's look at this story still on the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We understand that they will be squaring up against the Algeria Desert Forces and the Tunisian Cartage Eagles on the 9th and 13th of October, respectively. The players have gradually been arriving at the training base in Austria and have commenced training sessions. Gennett Rao's men go into these fixtures, ranked as one of the top 30 teams in the world for the first time since 2013. Also, the Super Eagles are ranked the third best team in Africa at the moment. That's a good one. Fantastic, actually. Um, with uh, talented young players such as Alex uh, Iwobi, uh, Victor Osime, and uh, Samo Chukweze in the current Nigerian setup, um, what do you think the chances are of uh, Nigeria reaching the heights of the Atlanta 1996 Dream Team? You know, the problem of Nigerian uh, football and players has really not been a matter of talent because season is or year in, year out, Nigeria has produced lots of talent. I mean, if you look at the squad we have right now in the Super Eagles camp, um, about 30 or 40 percent of the players are new faces, not even the players that went to the African Cup of Nations. So it tells you the kind of quality we have uh, in Nigeria. So, having said that, I, I don't think Nigeria is ready for, uh, you know, for that kind of responsibility uh, because the kind of players we have now are players that are selfish. Most of them want to represent Nigeria because they want you know, to have um, you know, a better opportunity at the club level, not players. If you look at the 96 squad, there were guys that 80% uh, were home-based players. They were hungry to represent their country, to wear the green and white color. They were hungry to win games, uh, not just for themselves, for, their, you know, for the nation. I mean, we, uh, most of those guys understood what it takes um, to play for Nigeria and hear those sounds of goal and banging when Nigeria scored. But the, the, the crop of players we have now, most of them 90% based in Europe, they don't understand that Nigerian spirit, they don't understand the Nigerian mentality, they don't understand what our home fans feel when Nigeria loses or win games. So the approach to games definitely will be different. So I, I, I don't think they're ready, even though they, I, I want to say that uh, we have more talented players than what we used to have then, but the difference is the zeal to represent your country. Yeah, but it, is it, doesn't that thrive on leadership as well? I mean, if you're saying that they're not uh, that inspired as players, um, one would ask, is going to the right man to lead uh, Nigeria forward uh, in, in the long term for victory? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite funny because um, general issues have been discussed time and time again. I, I, I think Gideon Roy is a very good coach. For instance, when Clement Westhoff uh, was coach of Nigeria in 1994, a um, lot of people didn't really believe in him until he started bringing the best from the players. Uh, in 1996, when um, Joe Bonfrey took over the team, against all odds, um, as, as an assistant to Westhoff, a lot of people didn't believe in what, what you bring to the table. But if you look at what Gideon Roy has done, who took us to the African Cup of Nations, and uh, we finished um, third, won the bronze medal, qualified us to um, the World Cup, having been uh, you know, out for some time, even the African Cup of Nations. I think his technical ability and his coaching ability is not in doubt. Uh, the challenge I have is, you know, the players themselves, not really the coach. Our problem has not really been, as a matter of fact, I can coach Super Eagles to victory. Uh, uh, Fumi, I'm sure you too can do that with a little guidance and all of that. So uh, the, the problem is not the coaching. I, I think it's more of the players, the zeal to represent the country, the understanding of what the green and white color means to every Nigerian. Uh, when you're on the pitch. It, it, it's a challenge for me. Yeah, General may, may have his own, but I think so far he's done well. And um, going to, talking about the future, uh, maybe a little more time, because when we talk about Nigerian coaches, I, I still can't point any coaches that I would say can do better than General. I stand to be corrected, <laughs> you know. So I, 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 I think he's, a, he's the right man for the job. And um, with, with, with a little more time, he can deliver for us. All right, now let's also talk um, about um, the likes of uh, Cyril Dessas and uh, Kevin Akwoguma, who recently switched allegiances uh, to Belgium and Germany, respectively, um, uh, to represent Nigeria. What are your thoughts? Just like you talk about um, investment in players, uh, Cyril Dessa, if you look at it, I, I think his switching from Belgium to Nigeria is, uh, is on a selfish um, reason. If he had a chance of being a starter in Belgium, he wouldn't have moved to Nigeria. 
for instance, look at the Belgium national team. They're number one in the world, best team right now in the world. Uh, a team that has uh, the likes of uh, Romelu Lukaku. They have um, Dries Mertens. Uh, the name goes on and on. Uh, you have um, the Hazard brothers and all of that. So you want to look at that kind of team and wonder where he will fit in. So, so that's for me, I'm personally not excited about his inclusion. Last season, he scored 15 goals. So far, he has got just one goal this season. So a lot of talks about uh, Tirudessa. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think it's just um, we, we, are, we are too excited about the invitation. Let's see what he will bring to the table, even though I feel Nigeria was the second choice. If he had a chance of playing for Belgium, he wouldn't have chosen Nigeria. That's my take about that. Yeah, that but let's see if he will... I mean, if you look at the other player, he's a German international, born and brought up in Germany. If you look at the German defense, where will it fit in? So Nigeria has to be the second option for him because he cannot break into the German national team. So we need to understand that these guys, are, they are business guys. They are how are we, how are we taking team, second best then? Not because they're from Nigeria. Are we, taking, are we settling for second best then? Is that what this implies? That, that, that's what it is. You know, for, for the Nigerian Football Federation, any player that... Um, there's Nigerian name that plays in Europe, you know, everybody wants to run after them. But these guys, Nigeria has never been a first choice. If they have, uh, for instance, um, uh, what was it, by uh, Bayern Munich defender who, who plays for Poland. I mean, if you look at these guys, they, if they have better options, they would never come to Nigeria. So, to your question, I think we are settling for second best in Nigeria. That's what it is. We need to pick players that from, we don't need to convince to play for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Players that from, from birth, they already know they want to represent Nigeria, not players that will convince to represent us. The feeling will always be different uh, on the pitch of play. I, my gentle opinion. Thank I guess you. we can let you go now. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brownson, one hour for joining us on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I think he was referring to um, the, um, Alaba, I believe, um, um, who eventually plays for Poland, I hope I'm sure. Something I, I want to quickly mention before we uh, jump off, you know, I... I um, I would agree with him um, with the perspective of where would you rather play? Um, would you play for England or would you try to be in the English national team and know that you would barely get any, any call up? Um, there are too many extra skilled players there that would not be dropped for you. So, you know, most of these players would rather just go back home um, and play for Nigeria. But if they feel like they have a chance... Um, just they like uh, yeah, exactly, away. they would they would take take yeah, that. Well, at the yourself. end of the day, it's still a business, even for those that are really good. It's still, I mean, the the world of um, of uh, sports is a humongous business exactly. deal. That that's my thinking. Yeah. Another thing that um, I, um, I was reminded of, you know, is that it's a Bukayo Saka. Um, watching the EPL would make you call it Bukayo Saka or Bukayo Saka. <laughs> um, same thing. I had same issues I had with um, Osazel Demigye. Um, it, it was called Odenwingi back then. Um, Until he corrected Igalo it. also, it should be Victor Igalo. Um, that's a pronunci pronunciation in the Bini way. Well, Hello. Right. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.